ABC 6 News at 10 starts right now with Weather First. Good Tuesday evening, still warm by November standards and breezy at this hour. The winds are around 15 to 20 miles per hour. In some locations, they are going to be backing off later tonight. Less windy after midnight. Temperatures getting down to around 40 degrees first thing Wednesday morning and Wednesday shaping up to be a gorgeous day. But some changes here by the end of the week. I'll have your forecast coming up. Good evening and thank you for choosing ABC 6 News tonight. I'm Maisie Olson. We begin tonight in Rochester, where we're getting the clearest idea yet of what's next for Rochester Public Schools after its $100 million ballot referendum failed. By a slim margin, voters turned down that request from RPS, which was rejected by just over 300 votes out of a total of more than 22,000. And just today, Superintendent Kent Pickell laid out what the future of the district's finances could be, warning of multi-million dollar budget cuts that could now be on their way. For more, we turn now to ABC 6 News reporter Rachel Mantos, who was at tonight's school board meeting and join us, joins us live from outside the Edison building. Rachel Mantos, ABC 6 News. Thank you, Rachel. Turning now to another update from Rochester Public Schools, in particular concerning the recent incident that led to a 15-year-old Century High School student's arrest, moments that were all captured on video. Last week, this fight escalated quickly, leading that student to pull out a knife and, according to what we can see on this video, may have tried to stab another student. Parents tell us they're concerned, calling on the superintendent and the district as a whole to respond. And tonight, they are. Century's principal sent a letter to parents and caregivers today outlining four ways the school is working to address safety on campus. They include enhanced security at the main entrance and additional hiring and training for staff. We spoke with Principal Monty Schwartz earlier today who further addressed this incident. You know, having a knife pulled in school is traumatic. So we are going to do everything we can to work together with students and staff to ensure that we create the type of environment where those things continue to be not only rare, but eventually maybe unheard of. Principal Schwartz also tells us that the school's SRO would typically respond to these kinds of incidents, but unfortunately, when this happened, he was not on school grounds. If you'd like to read Schwartz's letter to parents and caregivers, we have the full version up on our website at KAALTV.com. Heading now to Mower County, where an Olmsted County deputy turned inmate had his bail conditions change today to allow him to use the internet and visit his children. 44 year old Matthew Adamson, who worked at the county jail, was arrested this month as part of an undercover operation. That investigation ultimately landed him several felony charges, including one count of engaging in prostitution with a child. Adamson will be back in court in January. And overseas, police in the UK have made an arrest in connection to Adam Johnson's death. The 29-year-old Minnesota hockey player was killed during a game last month when another hockey player slashed Adam's neck with his skate. The man was arrested on suspicion of manslaughter. Although authorities have not confirmed who was arrested, we do know that this man, Matt Petgrave, has been identified as the player whose skate cut Johnson's neck. But again, police have yet to confirm that he is the man in custody tonight. Right now, doctors across the country are being warned to be on the lookout for possible cases of lead poisoning in children. That's because these products, which are marketed towards kids, have been linked to at least 22 cases of lead poisoning across 14 states. According to Mayo Clinic, the health risks include damage to the brain, nervous system, and kidneys. In the most severe cases, it can cause seizures, unconsciousness, and even death. Another risk includes the presence of lead-based paint, which is estimated to be inside roughly 29 million homes across the U.S. And now, Cerro Gordo County is getting millions in federal funding to help eliminate that risk. For more on this, we turn now to Jordan Sansom, who traveled to Cerro Gordo County to learn more about what the impacts of this funding could be. Sansom, ABC 6 News. An emotional day today in Algona's friends, family, and hundreds of fellow law enforcement officers gathered to lay Algona police officer Kevin Cram to rest. Officer Cram was killed a week ago today while attempting to arrest a man with an active warrant. 
as Cram approached this man, 43-year-old Kyle Rickey, shot and killed him, setting off an hours-long manhunt that finally ended in Sleepy Eye, Minnesota, where he's currently being held. Rickey has since been charged with first-degree murder and is waiting to be extradited to Kasuth County to face that charge. During Officer Cram's funeral, Algona's current and former police chiefs spoke about the man Kevin was, remembering him as a hero. Kevin Cram is one of the very best law enforcement officers in this entire area. Somebody that could have worked anywhere, but chose to do it right here in a place called home. Officer Kevin Cram was 33 years old. He leaves behind a wife and three children, as well as many loved ones. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Let's turn now to Michigan, where a judge has issued a ruling on a legal challenge seeking to keep former President Donald Trump off the state's primary ballot. A group of activists first brought the case, pointing to a section of the 14th Amendment that prohibits a person from running for federal office if they have engaged in insurrection. But the court ruled that Trump has followed state procedure to qualify for the ballot and that a clause in the Constitution cannot be used to disqualify him. And as Trump fights to reclaim the White House, a new mock caucus in Iowa, where he remains the projected frontrunner, shows another candidate coming out on top. Nikki Haley emerged as the winner, walking away with more than 37 percent of the vote organized by the Young Republicans National Federation. These results showing just how much the landscape has changed in the Republican primary race, something the group's chairwoman says comes down to how candidates have performed on the debate stage. A lot of it had to do with the most recent debate, actually. Um, and I, I think some of the comments that came out of that debate, the media surrounding that debate, um, influenced a lot of people. Weston added that such events like the mock caucus are about momentum and who may be heading in the right direction come January. Heading back to Minnesota, where just last week the EPA announced a severe quality issue in drinking water right here in our area. And while many in the region are still learning about this news, experts on nitrate concentration in water are already looking at solutions. Too many nitrates can be harmful to humans, and for eight counties across southeast Minnesota, they're finding themselves with an overwhelming amount. Austin has seen physical signs of nitrate like algae, and according to one expert, the city's progress has seen some setbacks. The nitrate problem, while it's not increasing dramatically, it hasn't been decreasing. Uh, surface water is uh, continuing to have large spread algae blooms. If you want to learn more about these nitrate levels, there will be a forum hosted by Responsible Ag in Karst Country at 7 p.m. on Thursday night at Eagle Bluff Learning Center in Lanesboro. And right here in Rochester, you may have seen some smoke in the air today. That's because both the fire and parks and rec departments were doing some controlled burns as part of an effort to maintain the city's grass and prairie lands. Now, we do want to note that when these burns happen, the possibility of smoke and ash rising in the air could present some issues for people with allergies. So for the rest of the week, if you are in an area where these burns are happening, RFD suggests that you shut your windows to avoid any issues. Smoky and hazy out yeah, there, Yeah, and a great opportunity to take care of the prairie grasses and get rid of the invasives and all that fun stuff that you like to do on the weekend. You get to right? do some fun, some fun stuff. All the outdoor projects. It's what? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to give us the money? No, I am. One of the speakers included Olmsted County Sheriff Kevin Torgerson. He sat down with ABC6 News to discuss his opposition to the bill and why he believes it could represent a safety issue. Members, Minnesotans are ready. Uh, cannabis should not be illegal in Minnesota. A bill legalizing recreational marijuana for adults in Minnesota is steadily making its way through the legislature. The sponsor of the House version, Representative Zach Stevenson, says Minnesota's current laws concerning cannabis do more harm than good. State and local governments are spending millions enforcing laws that aren't helping anyone, money that could be put to far better purposes. Since the bill's first committee hearing, one group that has been strongly against any push for legalization is law enforcement. 
Am I okay with it? No, I'll never be okay with legalizing marijuana. Olmsted County Sheriff Kevin Torgerson sharing those concerns at the Capitol on Thursday. He says some aspects of this bill should worry every Minnesotan. Speaking to ABC6 News, Torgerson argues what he calls serious issues not only for law enforcement, but for the safety of Minnesotans. It's really saddening to me that we're willing to uh, have as collateral damage the deaths on our highways just because people want to use marijuana recreationally. According to a study from the American Public Health Association, from 2000 to 2018, the percent of fatal crashes involving cannabis rose from 9% to 21.5%. But lawmakers say they have taken these concerns into consideration. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that I, there's no other bill that's gone as, through as rigorous and complete a process of development uh, that, that this bill has. Torgerson also says that there are issues with roadside testing for marijuana, the cost of retiring canine units, the potential increase of youth access, and the cost of training officers to specifically screen for marijuana intoxication. Now, according to a 2022 Star Tribune poll, roughly 53% of Minnesotans do support legalizing marijuana. As of right now, the House bill has been referred to the Ways and Means Committee.